My generation is the one where MS-13 tried to come and get real crazy in our city. MS-13 was going, you know what I mean? Ape shit in our city, and shorties, all types of crazy shit. Whatever is their ritual of how they, you know, they teach them shit. Oh, every OG yeah. teaches the outcome is something, and what they teach them was just not, it's not it, bro. They, you know what I mean? They're out there hurting women and all types of shit, you know? Mouse, baby. You got them all, man. When they see you down, there's no way. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bounce Back Podcast. I'm your host, B. Luke. I got a special guest with me today. Why don't you introduce yourself? What's going on, everybody, man? You know who it is. ASP, man. Arthur Supreme in the building. Right from next door in some of them, man. Had to come through. Me and B. Luke been talking about this for a minute. It's been my fault a couple of times that it waited so long, but now we're here and uh, we get into it, man. What part of Somerville you from? So I've been, I mean, I, I had moved there when I was two years old, man. So I lived everywhere. I mean, I lived in the Mystics. Um, I lived in Eastville, Union Square. I was from Winter Hill for years when I was younger. Okay. I grew up there and went to Hill for many years. You know, I'm just a Somerville kid. My father's side of the family has been from Somerville for generations. My mother's from Cambridge. So mm -hmm. I'm just, this is this is my area, man. You know right, what I'm saying? This is, uh, this is what created me. Man, what was your home environment like? We was on, se you know, Section 8 um, households, things like that. The, the struggle gotcha. was different then. There's still some some of it now. But, uh, yeah, more families, I feel like, then were just living that same, you know, Check-by-check check family life, um, struggling. I had a crazy household. My family, uh, there was a lot of nonsense in my family when it comes to drugs and stuff like that. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? So uh, that always will ruin uh, people, ruin ruin uh, structure, things like that. I knew struggle at a young, young time. You know what I'm saying? Just cause It was... And uh, at that time, too, like, you know, you think that stuff's normal. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I was going to ask, when did you realize that you were actually struggling? Because I know, for me, my household was crazy, but it was like, that's how it always was. It's, oh, right. you no, know, you don't realize it's not normal till you maybe see how other people live. When it's did that exactly point come to you where you're like... Um, what, I, what it was is we had a couple kids that, you know, there's a couple, you know, some of those not all... Um, down and out. Um, there's some parts of it that are good. So you, you come across these kids, you go to school with them and shit like that. And uh, yeah, you come, you know, oh yeah, come on, uh, you know, young homies, you end up mm -hmm. going to people's cribs and shit like that. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're taking a quick look around and you're just like, yeah, um, Things are different here. What you know kind what of saying? things did you know? Was um, it like well, more food in the fridge? Let type me tell of you right now. Cabinets my, full? Yeah, I mean, how, my household was just craziness. Um, my household is just loud. There's people running around this shit. There's mm -hmm. never quietness in my crib. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, it's always a. So you a, come from a big family? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. My family, um, immediate wasn't the biggest. It was me, my 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 baby sister, um, Amanda Davis. Shout out to Amanda Davis. Viral on TikTok. Amanda Davis, um, one one three. Make sure you remember that. <laughs> but um, yeah, she. Uh, it was me, her, and my father, and my mother. But uh, again, we were just loud people man and uh, and then we always had people over um our family was like people's people like there was right. i don't think i ever had a time when i was younger that i didn't have somebody else living with us for me like a lot of times my spot was kind of the spot where everybody you know my mom 100%. had her issue with drugs and stuff like that so she was more like the quote unquote the cool mom no, and all my friends my they still call her ma to this day to you this know day. what i mean that's the same thing with my family same thing with my family my mother and my father's love from everybody in my in my neighborhood for the same thing my right. crib the same shit bro i'm literally mm -hmm. like uh house was everybody went there you know what i'm saying i had the cool parents as mm -hmm. you would want to say again right. my parents is doing this and doing that right but uh there's reasons why they but when cool. you're a kid that's cool because they you let already you know do, you be smoking in the crib even my whatever. homies they they leaving their crib to come to my crib right you know but uh but yeah so you know all that happens but you know what that um i do want to Mark on one point there. Um, that builds that builds things that um, people you can't get in other places. So like yeah, right for whatever reasons it was all happening. Um, I built over time, which is my number one um, feat for me, which people might not even see. Maybe they do. Is um, I am a people's person. Mm -hmm. I know how to speak with people, all types of people. You don't need to be from where I'm from for me to understand you. Mm -hmm. But if you are, it's going to be that much easier. Right. But um, yeah. Um, it, but it comes from my me having the type of household that was okay for everybody to come to because now mm -hmm. I'm seeing, I'm learning young at a young age how to deal with many people how to deal with all different types of people you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so as much as things you know there's always you there's every, with every negative you can turn that into um, you can take it and make positive right. from it so uh so with all that craziness going on at home how were you as a student did any of that carry over in the school did you act out Talk yeah to me about like the early school years for you i was really um smart man that's the sad part i am very smart um mm -hmm. I, but again uh, as a young kid i was smart man again household was wild so like it's like it turned it turned I was always a decent student, but I was always a sports player and always a sports star. So okay. like that always gave me more push to want to do a little bit better than probably um, I would have if I did wasn't um, a sports player. Cause okay. I'm like, damn, fuck, like I really, I really um, got something here with the right. sports. So I'm going hard with that. But just yeah, um, 
household got even crazy as I'm getting older. Um, it only gets worse yeah. until it ends. But um, so it's like, yeah, so basically it was a lot, a lot of crazy shit in my crib at that time. Like, you know what I'm saying? School happens and like at this time, bro, it's like, you know, Gang banging is like what it, whatever it was in that time. It was like a way different thing. But mm -hmm. uh, you already know it's like every some of it created like whether you were blood or crip or mm -hmm. whatever king or whatever it was at that time. But um, you if you weren't that you were something else. You was you and your homies made up some shit. You know what I'm saying? There's right. so there was so many hoods and sets yeah. in that time. You I know remember when I was coming up, it was a lot of uh, parks like this. Absolutely. Okay, at least like these are the Lincoln, Absolutely. whatever Lincoln it was. Park kids and East, and, and yeah. um, Lowell Park kids and, yeah. that, and that Eastville. So what it seemed like it evolved more into. And now it starts to become now this is like a legit quote unquote gang again it gets um social media and the music a big have, influence have, on that. have create come together with all these other details mm. to create now what is going on which is like yeah like i mean bro people take people take um six-man friendships mm -hmm. and turn them into gangs they take six i man. mean the police will certainly consider you 100 percent. Anyway. but then again it's about the style of of the way we do things even right. we got football players and basketball players hitting shots talking about yeah. Like, you see what I'm saying? It's not even really doing gangbanging shit. It's just about the style of that life. So, like, people love emulating right. that. It's the culture. People love it. LeBron goes, LeBron hits the bench. Mm -hmm. He has nine daps with every basketball player on the court. Every right. single one of them looks like some gang shit. With all that being said, yeah, like, um, some of them now, you know, some of them, there's a lot of stuff with all that. Yeah. Um, a lot of politics there. But, um, yeah, things are getting, things, you know, things are getting, I, I'd say things are getting worse with things like that. You know what I'm saying? People focus more on that than, um, what we got going on out here. It's, we have such a peak of good things going on, art, music. It's just when you're young, if you're not guided towards those things, it's kind of easier to kind of gravitate towards. Yeah, because, you know I, mean? I mean. The stuff that we look back on as like, that's kind of buffoonery, but it was what it was. No, nah, you know? and when you look at it now, you're like, damn, it's such a unique, unique thing. People that have been through it, right, but are willing to sit back and like, because a lot of people are just moving forward in life, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, I got some kids, like I know some kids, man. You know, I uh, my son's a uh, Cambridge student, and uh, and I, I grew up in Cambridge in some of those. So, like, I know all, like, the coaches that play. And all the sports, bro, I know mm -hmm. all the coaches. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I done played, did this, did that, been at, been at events. You know what I'm saying? These dudes are literally, like, you know, just not praised enough. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm so going to my son's championship basketball games. Melly's was there. He pulled up. You know what I'm saying? So, it's at the Hoyt. Ho that's just like a legendary, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, my man's is one of the coaches for the teams. I'm looking like, this is someone I played mm -hmm. ball with, AAU, GBL, um, Kuma Jones, all them. You know what I'm saying? Shout out them. Yeah, I was going to say, shout them out, man, because we need more, you know, positive stuff. Oh, like, absolutely, shout out to, uh, man. Lance Daunton, he was yeah. coach of Ranger, first, Ranger Latin. First of uh, all, yes. Banks, who was These over are there. all people Probation, that I, so. I grew up around, exactly. Uh, Richard Harden, Moki, for what he does with the Cambridge Works program. Absolutely. So many, Absolutely. Um, so many people putting their hands in and getting yeah. dirty. And you know what I'm saying? Like, these people could have been doing anything else in life. Absolutely. But they seen, they lived the culture when they were young and they said, damn, we need these people. So this is what we need more, more than anything. With having so many things to be involved in, it makes it easier to see for the kids to feel cooler or, yeah. or whatever the word you want, you know, lack right. of a better term, to feel like, oh, this is kind of something else to do. If you've got mad different people and different types of people doing these things, you know what I'm right. saying? Instead of just like, oh, there's nothing to do out here. So what's next? Well, you that's know? one positive you Rex, can take from the uh, social media is knowing like, what events is going on? I've yes. been back in the day if like my mom didn't know about it, if you I didn't hear about it, you hear about it in a week. After, you hear about it afterwards. Yep. So yep. you know that's one of the things with social media. That is health. Yeah, it's like, social there's media is like there's anything. There's positive things to get from it, man. There really is. Bro, you know? I think everything, bro. Everything in life you can find. You can it's just find what kind of it. what's your mindset? If you're a positive person, you're gonna find that that cup half full, and the negative person is gonna Absolutely. find it half empty. And it's just like a mindset thing. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Very important to think of it. It's, like that. it's what we make it. So as a student, though, were you getting suspended? detention what kind anything like that or you yeah I, much so I was my coach I played I was a basketball star for some of the high um I, I was on I started the freshman team we had three nasty teams like we had so many teams that year we were like that was the one year we the one year we had beat we um our varsity and JV had like Cambridge, like Cambridge, but with, that's not often though. But it was that year, right? Two thousand. I graduated two. I would graduated two thousand nine. So it was like two thousand six, two thousand five. So yeah, long story short, I was playing there. Boom, moved up to. Um, I, I had played for for a minute. Like we, our teams were going like twenty four and two and things like that. But you know, I just was starting to fuck up and get involved in all everything else. So like, but I'm still playing ball, still trying to hold on to ev like my everything. And then uh, my coach. Matt Desmond, we used to call him Mad Desmond. He was nuts, but he's the man. He he came. To my, well, I'm Mark. What's going on? Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Like I had like I was out half of the year. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't mm -hmm. at school. It was just like. Are you like I'm, we skipping? What kind yeah, of I just, just wasn't not going. Showing up? Yeah, I just wasn't going, bro. That's just the main thing. When I was there, 
the whiz, yeah. like, <laughs> like yeah. then, So what kind of things were you doing when you weren't going to school? You just staying home watching staying cartoons, the, or what do nah, you do? You I was streets? at the. I mean, my crib was in, uh, in. It was in crazy turmoil. There was a lot of beef going on in my crib. Um, with with you know what I mean between family and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Not me, but like my my pops and everybody and like a whole bunch of shit going on. So, so did me, things like get violent in front of you at like a young age or. Uh, in so many different ways, gotcha. not like really in my crib so much. Like mm -hmm. my my pop, and my mom, like they were crazy with each other and insane mm -hmm. and crazy fights and shit. But never, it was never like a never ever a, um, an extreme thing. Right. Like they would fight. It would be my mother with my father half of the time. Right, and right, right, being right. Like you fucking bitch. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like never, I, my papa was never that type of dude. Um, but, but I've seen this dude literally pummel people to like to nothing. Um, at young ages, like hey, my father. So how did you feel as a young kid? Did you feel like proud of your father? Were the you first, scared? I mean, the first if, if time young, I was you might... like, God. Damn, I was <laughs> screaming at old boy like, "Yo, chill, 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 chill." chill. Mm -hmm. You gonna? I don't think he. I think he's done. Yeah, you know right, I, mean? right, I think right. he's done. But like, yeah, as you get older, that's how it is for anything the first time. You know what so saying? what like, about like as far as family members locked up getting in trouble with the law? Was that part of your? Um... My pop, yeah. So I was like, my pop was on the run when I was born in Maine, Biddeford, Maine. And the only reason I was born in Biddeford, Maine, is because my mom and my father had to had to be out. They dipped up there. My literally, my father was living with um, homie with, with like peoples in um, the fucking cabins out there and shit like that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So then I was born out there in a hospital out there. Then they went to Florida for like a year. My mother hated Florida. The, 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 and this is all because he's on the run right yeah, now. Okay. At that time, gotcha. yep, in the yeah, 90s, yeah, 1990, the yep. 1990. Wherever they were at in Florida, it was not it for, mm -hmm. for the um, for her. So she was like, "Listen, I'm getting the fuck out of here, and mm -hmm. you're either coming back and turning yourself in, so we can start getting things together." Right. Like it wasn't, it was bad, like what he had to go for, but it wasn't nothing that was gonna be holding no ten years. You know, he was right, he right. was looking at like four or five. He just wanted to be there for uh, my birth and all gotcha. that other yeah, shit. Yeah. So now I'm like one and a half, two. We come back to Somerville. My dad goes, <clears throat> turns himself in. And fucking yeah, like that. It, you can I can barely remember that shit. Okay. I was just like I remember going somewhere, and that my mother probably said some shit like yeah. He was like sick or something. I don't fucking so remember. he so he dealt with that, and then he had a, what he ended up doing time for yep. that. Yep. And Good then time. he came out. Yeah, that's my pop held it down to that. He was always a worker and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But then again, that's what it is. Like he lived this crazy life before mm -hmm. kids. I have two older sisters too that he has from past. Yeah. Long story short, you know, over time I feel like um just being captured. Like it's tough living that life and then and then coming to be like to live like completely normal. You know okay. what I'm saying? But I'll tell you like this: my mother and my father are the 100% reason I am the great motherfucker I am to this day. It's like it's it's a tough one. It's one yeah. of those like yeah like. You know what? They did the best thing. Like my parents, my mom was 16 when she got pregnant with me. Right. So now we're talking right. about 16 year old and 18 Living year old in that kid time. in the mid 80s. Yeah, they're doing the best they did the best they could. You we're know? lucky that it was survived through. Exactly. They yeah, they did what they had yeah. to do. People know my truth, so if you know me, and then I'm I'm always the type of person that speaks on anything. Like there's nothing I don't speak on because gotcha. I don't got nothing not to speak. On. I don't got nothing that's shameful not to speak on. So like yeah, but uh, but yeah, the the red the, the narrative all day is that these two people are my fucking soul and, and backbone like you know what i'm saying these are people Absolutely. to this very day that are um the reason i'm where i'm at now are they still together no they're not they separated years and years and years ago so were you young like talk about that seven there was seven i was 17. okay when they so finally, he was already pretty much yeah, grown anyway which but... was made it a little bit like tougher i'll tell you all, all parents trying to make it figure i know these are tough decisions i've done this if, if it's not it it's young, just do it early. You know, mm. you get it out early. The kids will be, oh, but they're gonna get over it quick. Young k k children heal on things. I feel like those type of things quicker when it's um, earlier or right. late. I mean, I'm, I'm when it's earlier opposed to later. Right. You know, 16, 17, you find something out now, it's like, oh, right. it's a hit. Well, like, like you're saying, everybody like you said earlier, when you're at that age, you don't even know it's not normal. Exactly. It just is what it is. And I you're know. a kid, you're taking it all as a sponge. That is you don't true. Even realize, but you're, now 17, you kind of realize You have all these emotions now yeah. when you're 17. Because yeah. you've been taught by whatever books you read and movies you're fucking... Yep, um, you can think for your own now. Yeah. yeah, every kid ends up learning. Like It starts in young children. You start seeing them saying phrases from shows mm -hmm. and like it creates their own personalities it really it helps it helps give yeah. um push towards things that's why it's huge about what you want your kids want you know okay yeah, yeah but that. so other than um like in and not just not going to school 
Any any fights, anything like that? Yeah, well, that's yeah, just some just of it was. Stuff? That was that's what some of it was. Bro. Okay, just fighting all the time. That's what some of it was. Some of it came. All, the, all yeah. of these are Medford. All these areas. So some him. of it was getting to it, like, and then we had like, you know, what I mean, there was like, um, the, my generation is the one where MS13 tried to come and get real crazy in our city. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. So I we was dudes were beefing with. Shout out to everybody in the Ville that I've ever, even if I dark cool with you, man. If you ever was part of this moment, of these times, MS13 was going. You know what I mean? Ape shit in our city. Sure, these all types of crazy shit. Like, so it's pretty much was it a thing where it's like if you see these dudes, it's an on site. Hundred percent. And a lot of the time it was them. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of the time these dudes don't fuck around. Like they were like they were tapped motherfuckers. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like these dudes, like you know, however they, whatever they, whatever is their ritual of how they, you know, they teach them shit. Oh, every OG yeah. teaches the outcome is something, and what they teach them was just not. It's not it, bro. They, you know, what I mean, they're out there hurting women and all types of shit. You know, to prove that. Whereas we like to prove here, that they're we wild. Have, like, more of a somewhat of a code yeah on the streets, bro with right? our we generation if we are at the back park playing ball and we see somebody fucking beating on that girl on the sidewalk like the basketball is dropping for a second we're figuring this out real right quick because you're not doing this out here you know take this in your house or something i know it's none of our business but like that's just what our generations were built on yeah you know what i'm saying like that's uh yeah these dudes out here like Praying on women, it was just insane. But yeah. that was a time. It's not like that no more in Super Bowl. Right. Not at all. It's like, well, you know, there's obviously fucked up shit going everywhere on everywhere. But MS13 was, like was prominent then. They had raped a shorty in Foss Park, and it got real crazy. And yeah, uh, I remember hearing about yeah, that. Yeah, and dudes were going nuts. I mean, I know so many homies to this day. Scars, fucking all types of crazy shit, beefing with these dudes. And then guns got involved. Yep. And then... Yeah, and then things it, escalate from there. Then escalated, things escalated, and all that other shit happens, and then everybody goes to jail, and then whoever right. survived, mm -hmm. everything survived, and talks about it. You yeah, know? now we kind of yeah, exactly. talk about. It. Hopefully, somebody can learn from all this stuff. Bro. So, what, what did you graduate high school? Summer so, what high? I did is okay. I um I left Somerville High first after my first year. I went to Malden High, lived with my my cousin Jason Hughes, Jay Husey, Husey, my dog. Um, um. And uh, basically, uh, I got into a fight there, two fights there over some corny shit. I was just a hard. What was the fight? So is it because now you're a Somerville kid? I'm a hard-headed Somerville kid. A lot of it's me at the time. I'm a gotcha. hard-headed Somerville kid, and I'm fucking. I don't know. The world is so big. Mm -hmm. I think the world is as small as I've been. I moved from so my world was Somerville, Cambridge, Boston, and mm -hmm. a little bit of Medford and shit right. like that. You know, I never crossed over that Everett Malden area, and I used to always just be like, "What the fuck is this?" Why? Yeah. But it's stupid shit because yeah, I ended yeah. up loving this. Is all this is all part of me now? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, at the time I was just like, yeah, and like it wasn't just that. It was just yeah, it, it's just a generation. Dog. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm fucking going to ninth grade, fucking bumping easy, like real motherfucking G's, yeah. and <laughs> like motherfuckers right. is just standing on trying to stand, trying to prove dominance and stand on business you know so so what it, kind of fights did you get you got into like one a couple one-on-one -on -one almost fights? Um, almost happened? almost all of them when it came to me and, and young age it always was uh yeah like i got into a million up and ups like a million up and ups because that's what they were then you know what i'm saying yeah. but like there's been times like well, i've been like the cities are just crazy at that time i was one time chilling with these two shorties at conway park i'm talking about young age like mm -hmm. 15 years old dudes walk by say something to the shorties i'm not even on their backs i'm i'm not actually young i'm like 15 mm -hmm. they're like whatever older and the, sh and the shorties say, like, fuck you, motherfucker, some mm -hmm. shit. Dudes come over. I end up, long story short, mm -hmm. I end up getting jumped at the end of this. Like, these yep. four kids beat the dog shit out of me. Right. I had my peoples pull up in a Mustang that was at my crib, not down the street. My older, like, my sister's older boyfriend. Ah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had came, went looking, couldn't find it. Like, random shit like that, bro. That just oh, happens, bro. and you're like, what the fuck is going yeah, on? You right. know what I'm saying? But, yeah, at a young age, I had a few up and ups. Dudes know about the up and ups I had, but um, these are all, like, light stuff because like in the city it was light dudes weren't really getting crazy with each other it was again the ms13 dudes that was like that was like where we started focusing all of yeah. our things but there was always beef dudes in the time you know always there was a couple couple you know i know a couple dudes that ended up getting really getting in with these dudes like yeah. you know on, on a crazy level doing time for it mm -hmm. so yeah man it, it was a war for a little bit so how long was that going on in malden how long did you stay at malden high when i went to malden high i was there for one year and one then year. I went to Everett, the new Everett High School, the first year of the new Everett oh, High okay. School. Man, I ended up just dipping, and I ended up going to um, Youth Build Justice Star. Shut up, Youth Build Justice Star, um, Cambridge, Mass. Um, okay. Those are my people. Yeah, I was like Youth Build 19 or 18. Or do it regularly in high school, you know what I'm saying? And that's the age to reason. try to get to, to them right before we end up in the adult in everything system. Else. They were like counselors. They're part of my story. They're part of yeah. um, who I am. Again, all part of the story. That's, that's a TM. Yeah, so shout out to you. Max, you so when you're going to Justice Star, stuff like that, you're not going... So you're missing out on things like prom and stuff like that. Did you like definitely? This is like kids who dropped out. 
It's yeah. like, so you already kind of made the decision to not do regular high school. Yeah. So this is your way to get yourself something that says you put in the effort to continue it. Yep. And um, it's kind of dope, man. You create families. It was the dopest thing I've ever, it was so dope. First of all, half of the, half of the days, like class and half yeah. of the days construction. We'd get hired for projects, you know, they yeah. build homes That's and dope. all this shit like that, or like complexes for like um, elderly and stuff like that. And uh, they'd use us, obviously it's free, but we have advisors who, when it's not just a bunch of kids right. out there yeah. hacking this on, we got, we got somebody doing it all. And us, he's saying, just do that, boom. Yeah. And we're doing it, and we're meeting people, and we're taking pictures and um, saving them for memories and things yeah. like that. They took me and like two, three other kids, and we went to this house in like Wilmington, millions of dollars for this house. We walk in, there's like 35 white people sitting on sitting on the floor with drinks or on the couch, chilling like they're about to come watch like a, uh, you know, an, an event. So what happens is, we were chosen to go up there, tell our story, tell why we can't. Um, why high school didn't work for us normally, mm -hmm. and why Justice Dot has done things for us to get, make it so it's possible for us to succeed and right. do things in life. I was up there killing it, bro. Nice. All right, I, this is what mm -hmm. I do. I, I talk to people. I'm That's a people's person. I knew this from a young age. This is one of my first times really knowing it. Um, I had people laughing. Um, That's what literally. Up. You know. That's what's up. And I think it's important, too, especially, like, young men, like, to get your hands on stuff. Like, we're full of so much energy. Like, and if it's you don't tough do to it, tell it a kid to sit tough. down for six hours a day in a classroom, yep. bro. We at that age, too, puberty, testosterone's building. It's we just got this release. energy. It's all part of a release. Yeah, and, like, and you got to have that. That's why kids, like, you know, that's why there's so much ADHD. When do you start getting into run-ins with the law? Bro, I didn't get in trouble with the law for a grip. The first time I ever got arrested and got and, and got brought to to a jail, I, got, um, I was coming back from doing a song with Sean Price, R.I.P. Sean Price, the God, um, Sean Price from New York. Um, I, I I linked up with him through old times. I used to do music with these legends out there, and uh, and I did a song with him, and I went to go do a video, and uh, there's clips of it to this day in, my, in some other music videos, and uh, he. R.I.P. He had passed away. Literally, part of who I am today, mm -hmm. for a fact, as an artist, for a fact. It's because of Sean Price, and it's and you might you can't even see it or feel it or hear it because it's just like we're just two different artists. But like the confidence, confidence with this man was just like overflowing. He's when I did the song with him, we did a song called Concrete Certified. Shout out Sir Richter, um, me, him, and and um, and Sean Price, and like bro, he'll lay his verse and be like, "Did you hear that?" Mm -hmm. Like still forty something years old, still talking about, "Did you hear that?" Like yeah, yeah, bro, no, so much passion for this. But um, I got caught coming back from there. Um, I was driving back and got pulled over and I got caught with a blick and, and work and all this other nonsense. But yeah, pretty much to keep it to keep it a buck, this is public record, you can look this up, fucking um my man's had just like was going through shit with family like and shit. Yeah. He had his daughter and was doing things like you know what I'm saying? So he had put it like this. I wasn't letting nobody get dragged into no nonsense. So basically without like I basically was like, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I didn't say anything in particular, I just told him like if they, if whatever happens here, these dudes have nothing to do with this car, you know? I said that they're on record. Whatever you find in here, they have no recollection of. They already found work. Gotcha. So it's not like they didn't find anything yet. They already found work, but I knew that they were going to find the joint. Mm -hmm. So like, I knew, now that they found the work, they're fucking, they're in it now. So yeah. I'm just like, fuck. So I'm just like, anything else you find, blah, blah, blah. So they let them go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So peace to them. Thank God. They were able to continue on with their lives. They were just coming on a trip with me. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Most people probably wouldn't do that. They're just like, oh, we all fighting this, but so for it, you. It, it's a common thing for, for for some people. I get it if it's like four, like, these are my best friends. But again, if we're like four best friends who really are into this life, like, like which they these dudes are real dudes, you know what I'm saying? But they're also, you know, I was oh, running down a path yeah. of fucking insaneness. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like. So what happens with this? You get like, how's it work with the stadies? Wait, like, I got court. Do you go? You go to the state police barracks? Like, yeah, I got. I got, went to the state police barracks. They and let then, you out, and then you held or what's well. What happens about, like, is, what happens? is they're mad happy because they, because I said, like these dudes have nothing to do with anything in the car and all this other shit. Right. But um, but long story short, they wanted me to say that, say that now, now that I'm at the station. On paper. And I'm like, yeah, all right. So I sign a paper saying I don't want to speak to the cops. They're tight, tight now because <laughs> they know that that's like a huge thing. That was mm -hmm. a huge thing. That was like, oh, we got them saying it. It's like saying what. And even if we want to go there, it's like, yeah, saying what? That they don't have any record. I was talking about the work. I don't know what else you're talking about. Everything else you're talking about, boom. So now what happens is why court code is so good for me is because they can't get these people in now. They're not suspects. They already let them go. Like, they were never, you know what I'm saying? So, so they're like, trying to send them summons and To stuff? get them they, in to say yeah. that, oh, well, was this yours in the car? Of course, they're not fucking retarded. They're not fucking involving themselves in that nonsense. So they never get nobody up there. So it comes to like, oh... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it basically, yeah, it basically was, like, tough. Like, they did, a lot, and I can go on for days about my case. It was insane. Like, the, the, they did some crazy, crazy shit. Like, they tried to, um, they tried. What, but, like, evidence? Yeah, like that? yeah. They weren't supposed to testify um, when they did. Mm -hmm. um, literally, 
Mark Somerville, crazy. I'm, my name is Michael Somerville. <laughs> Judge Mark Somerville. Bro, I can't wow. make this shit up. Um, Judge Mark Somerville um, got pulled off of the case because wow. he was supposed to make a decision on a mistake they made. We had a summons accepted, and we had a, a, um, a motion accepted saying that they weren't supposed to testify on him. Mm -hmm because they don't trust the state police barracks, things like that, wow. because they went through some case back in like 2000, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. It's like a whole case law thing. Yeah. And uh, they send the person who signed the paperwork on vacation, and the other person who who, who was filling in didn't know about the motion. And how is that not on the paperwork? Is this something you're fighting from the streets? Absolutely, yeah. What kind of bill did they give you? They held me because I had some other stupid shit going on, so I was held for like, for like, 120 days or 90 days and then where did they hold you at was, it, was this was this your first time in jail this is, no so i'm at that this first time i go to nash for a couple days i come home it's like 2010 or something like that and i ended up beating that case um i ended up staying home beating that case and then from there i ended up catching another case like that I got pulled over the car you know right. work oh, in the car boom, boom. Boom. Yep. um even no another oh, even one before, another okay. one before this so now i so now i have that open gotcha. this is how now it's yeah. tied in perfect so this is like two so that's like 2013 i catch that case um, so now, following in, 2015 is everything I just explained to you with right. the Sean Price it, shit. And you already have that other open case. So I have they, the case from 2013. So okay. Exactly. And that's how I get held. So tell me about Nash, because Nash is pretty thorough, Nash is dude. crazy. I mean, Nash is crazy. Listen, what was that like? Nash, the thing about Nash, though, Like, you being from Somerville, you know, you got all that. That's I'm, all I'm Boston, on the outside like, who, because... Who are you? How I, do you... I fuck with everybody. Because I'm the kid who... I'm a, I'm a basketball player slash... You know, white kid from around the way that right. just does everything. But that's a good in, though. Being very good in. Playing and ball with I'm people not from and Boston, you build that bond, And too. I'm not from Boston. So you're not dragged into beef that got nothing. I'm only there and recognized because there's people from Boston who love me. They fuck with me because they remember me and they know mm -hmm. me from popping out when I was younger and shit like that. But, yeah, it's like, my to be honest, bro. Pretty, I, so your, your, your time there was pretty smooth? My National bid, Street? I did, I did three and a half years. I got four years. I, um, I was supposed to, I mean, I got six months good time. Um, barely. I got it just at the end. Took me mad long to fucking start getting it. But uh, long story short, um, my bid was smooth, dog. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Besides the fact that I'm not with my family, you know, and right. the obvious terrible so, thing. So you're waiting in Nashville Street and then you get sentenced and go to the Bay? I'm just at Nash on the uniform minute, um, I have to be held for 90 days because I got the open case. Mm -hmm. 90 days come, my, my older man, V, shout out my older mans, um, there's not too many people I call that. Um, he he had my whip, he was taking care of my whip, and then um, he, him and a couple of my other homies had picked me up and got me and bailed me off of five bands, something like that, mm -hmm. boom. So now I'm home fighting that case and the other one. Mm -hmm. I ended up taking, I ended up going, um, I ended up taking like time served for those 90 days mm -hmm. for, for the probation. For the mm -hmm. open case. For the, for the first one? For the one? first open case that I had. It wasn't even open. I'm sorry. I think it was settled. I settled it in court. But when I was when I was in being held, I went to court, settled it. Like, listen, boom. I'm fighting this other case. Uh, so now like, you I, just got the one, though. And I just got about. the one. So then I go to trial for that in July of 2016 um, and whack that. We're not going to go. I beat it. Um, I don't, my, I, my lawyer came straight out and said, we plead guilty for the drugs. We're not trying to trick you on anything like that. Right. But we are going to tell you that the way they did this procedure with the gun, uh, all this other shit, you know. So do you end up getting time for the drugs? Do you um, plead guilty to that? Or is that I, another time served thing? Time served, probation. No, pro probation. They gave me probation. Probation. They gave me whatever I did do was time served and then probation. So now, um, now this is how it rolls over perfectly into my most recent last case, the last case of my life. Um <clears throat> So now um, I beat that. I'm high off life. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That shit got real crazy in the court. I, again, now I, is this something where you're feeling like, man, I'm kind of like that gave me the wake up dog, call I'm I tripping. needed. Let me kind of step out, away right? from the streets. I, 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 so <laughs> think about it. I beat that case in 2011. That's three and a half years. Then I beat the case 2013. Not beat it, but like it got tied into like you know I got my I got time served and like whatever. I didn't have to do so much. So you said for that. three and a half years of what probation? So my first case, that's I was looking at. Five years, right. know, three and a half year to five years. Beat did, that. Did they indict you on that? It tried to, it? and I and beat they it. Okay. And I it beat it. Didn't even make it to Superior. Exactly. It didn't even Probably. make it there. It got dropped to different charges, gotcha. and, yep. and then I beat the it. That time. one I beat. Then the second one I ended up, they got dropped charges, and then fucking um, I ended up taking like time served things like that because I was already sitting. And then uh, so I'm already beating time, bro. You know mm -hmm. these dudes are like, you know, I'm I'm for fuck up, you know, and these dudes are just on mm -hmm. my, you know, fucking, they're not failing me. So then I get the, so now I beat this trial for the gun case. Mm -hmm. Now now. Now it's a, now it's kind of like a big one now. So now that you know, and and now fucking, so I'm on probation. It's just as simple as facts. Like they just kind of pay attention to you. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like they're like, and then they're like, who the f like, 
you know, not for nothing. They're like, who the fuck is it? Like, then they start looking. They just like, into they, you they more. just, they just not fucking with me. You know right. what I'm saying? They're like, who does this fucking kid think he is? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which I respect. I really, yeah. honestly respect it. Like, who the fuck did I think I was? Yeah, but they take it personal when Absolutely. you beat them at their own Absolutely. game. Absolutely. For Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> so now, um, you know, so long story short, these dudes come. Um, I ended up fucking up in life and like not fucking with probation like that. I'm fucking doing stupid shit. I'm fucking fuck up a thousand times. This is like a bad time in my life, even though I like I was living like. Some people would think, of, oh, it might have been my pinnacle and shit, because I was born, I had mm. everything I wanted. I was fucking, you know, dry. I had d- f- five different cars in a year, every mm. single one of them nasty. I'm just jumping in one, jumping in. I'm doing mm. so much shit, bro. Brought my first chain, bought my first, all this shit. Like, mm. I was really doing me, but mentally, I wasn't. I was, like, wild. I was all over the place. Shit, right. that I just wasn't tight. And then my, at the pops. same time, my crib is, like, a spot that we throw afties at. Right. And I'm living this life, which is not a good mixture. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm fucking nervous about who knows where I live. All this crazy So how are you? Shit. how do you find peace at any point? If you don't. You don't. The, the weed. You find <laughs> weed and you know, just fucking drugs, heavier drugs, or drinking. Drinking, right. Drinking, then heavier drugs to balance right. the drinking. Right. It's like, it, it just, it becomes a demonized fucking idea. And then like, the most important thing is recognizing it. Mm-hmm. I've been there. Let me tell you, brother. I've had some of the worst, I've had some of the worst downings. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I put smiles on for everybody and people, people love that. You know what I'm saying? People mm-hmm. love that. I've, I've, people know my, know my energy, man. If they, right. you know, meet anybody that really know me, um, right. you know, and it's like, uh, but yeah, um, we don't always start at zero. We start way back here, man. So, so we even like, to- talk to me about like the lowest point of your life, what that was like for you, and then how did you pull yourself out of it? Like being in prison was a fucked up part of my life. Like it create, I just, I just, I treasure it so much. It's hard to explain. Right. Like what it created for me. Like right. so. Before we get into that, yeah. then let's talk about how you're on probation. Yeah. You're running the streets. The events that lead up to you going. Finally, to I'm being let's hot talk. as fuck. Someone tells on me. Someone Somebody you knew? Me, no, someone no. I knew. Yeah, someone I knew. They were involved with people I was fucking with, and they, it, it was just all a bad situation. You know, okay. that's what happens. We're fucking, yep. you know, you're fucking out here doing dumb shit. You're, you're local. You're just, you're just. What's, what do you think? Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. As a, oh, everybody knows me. Right. Yeah. What do you think that? What do you think mixes into that? Everybody, the cops too. Yeah, of course. They fucking everybody. They, they're of part course. of everybody too. <laughs> they know. Yep. So then it's just only a matter of time. So like, long story short, the, the warrant was out for my arrest, and state police are the people that I've dealt with in all my cases. So they are the ones that actually hate me. It's not just. Mm-hmm. Police, it's like state police, and uh, long story short, they're the ones that serve body warrants. They go, okay. oh, look who yep. we got. Yeah, they uh, they ended up coming for me, raided the crib, da da da. So I'm just like, alright, time to get comfortable, time to turn to bid mode or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I bought, you know, maybe stop playing ball. I, I was there for a couple months. My probation that I had open sentenced me to time, so I had to go to the bay mm-hmm. to do time. How much they sent this you? Six months. What's going on now? You going to court still? Do you finish the six months? I finish the six months. I go upstairs to Nash status. So now I'm pre-trial again. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I've been in the building now for a fucking, you know, almost a year. Mm-hmm. I do the rest of my time there. Um, I do the rest of my like, pre-tri- wait, like waiting, pre-trial yeah. time. My lawyer was basically like, listen, you give my client something that he's gonna be able to do like with t- t- serving time, he'll do probation. Like mm-hmm. he's gonna be, a, he's not, I know he didn't show up for this, like, mm-hmm. but he's like, he's grown. He knows what's up, like yep. he's boom. So they're like, fuck, they didn't want to do it. Like fly, their last offer was like five to seven with like three years probation. I'm like, not happening. Yep. So um, they ended up saying four, four in a day with three years probation. Talk about when you go upstate, you get to uh, Walpole? Basically, yeah, I get there. I'm there for four or five months. They blackball me because I'm sitting with gang members. It's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm only I'm only here for drugs and like I'm a, there's a pistol involved in my case, but like still, it's like it's I only have four points and you Damn. need like over five to to go to the minimum. I mean to the medium. Yep. <clears throat> They blackball me and try to tell me they need time behind the wall for me, which mm-hmm. is bullshit because time behind the wall in the county, that's behind the wall, brother. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I never leave behind the wall. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's I did a year and I, I did a year and two months in the county, which is not going to be any different. You know yep. what I'm saying? The county gets wild. Like you know what I'm so saying? So they the don't end up sending you to the minimum from there. Nope, I go right to a medium. And um, Shirley Medium, which is the second worst spot in Mass besides the Mac. I do about a year there in like all the, um, they have something called Happy Hour, where mm-hmm. you can go every Tuesday or Wednesday, I think yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. and you go and you speak to like the people, and like, it's all bullshit. That was literally yeah, give yeah. the same response for a thousand whatever, years, yeah. exactly. Whatever issues you may or may, yeah, exactly. yeah I got you. I'm there with portfolios, bro. <laughs> portfolios of shit, like, dog, I'm supposed to be out of here. They finally, over mad long, you know what I'm saying? I do mad good. I, I ended up finally getting up out of there, and they sent me to Shirley Minimum. And I was in Shirley Minimum until I went home from Shirley Minimum. And, um... So when you get up to the medium, is there people you know there from count? Who do you decide? How do you figure out who you're rolling with? Who you sitting with, man? Who, who What's going on? Who'd you Again, roll with tough. up there? I can write a book on, on this shit. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, my, I feel like sometimes I, I'm living a fucking um, movie. But, uh, yeah, brother, I... I, I 
I've been with, through so many walks in life, you know, again, I'm, I'm a little older, you know what I'm saying, not older, but you know what I mean, I'm not 20, you know, um, mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been around, the, um, these corners have seen a lot of me um, in a lot of different ways and a lot of different factions um, with a lot of different people, and um, I realize a lot about myself going up that way, you know what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. like I've always known like I got love in places and things yeah. and things like that, like brother, I, there wasn't a prison I can go to that I didn't know nobody, which was a blessing right. for me, again, yeah. every place I went there was a bag waiting for me. You know what I'm saying? Or, or was made for me when I got there, you know what I'm saying? Until I got my bag, you know, things like that. Like, um, So what are one of those things that you learned about yourself? That I, that I just know people. I mm -hmm. know people um, I'm, and I'm good to people. Um, and that, that transcends, like that comes back. Like no matter which way you want to look at it. I'm, listen, I'm far from anything um, short of like, 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 I, like, um, I can just get along with people. Some people change that to think like, oh, like they got to be like, like, that, like, like, all these dudes, I just be super tough, too tough sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. like, brother, For what? that doesn't yeah. prove nothing. Like, I know, like, let me tell you, are you going to see me with a smile on around so many people? But let me tell you, I get down like that's what it is. Like, it's not like you don't need to have on a sour face all the time. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And it's just like um, I learned, like, even in the worst places, I, I had people like th that just loved me. You know what I'm saying? And ones who met me, it was all the same. Yeah. I met so many good people up the way, brother. Yeah, absolutely. There's people I'm to this day... I feel like a lot of that, you know, flexion and, and the, the the mean mug and a lot of that is uh, it's like a defense mechanism. It's uh, like it is. Pe peacocking. And it, Let me show you because I don't. It's not really, even their I, fault, bro. Yeah, it's, it's not it's, even sometimes their fault, bro. You know what it is? A lot of the time is uh, how they grew up, and that um, that trans that I got homies that were like that forever, and then they weren't no more. Mm -hmm. You know, they they went to prison, they came home, and they still like, bro, they got. I got dudes, you know what I mean? Homies, you look at, you just be like, right, you know, so whatever judgment people would want to put, like, they're just, you know, very outlandish looking people and they've been through a lot of things in life, but now they're just trying to be home, take care of kids, be family members, you know, yep. uh, things like that, you know, so it's, I don't regret going to prison. Like you said, like you've been saying, it's, it's all part of the I don't story. regret it at it's all. So you hit the minimum, you're ready to come out, re-entry. What's what's the plan? They say if you you know if you don't have I a had plan, a whole plan, bro, written down all that yeah. shit. I'm one of them, man. Yeah. Um, and and I, it's still part of the plan. Um, it's just that things didn't work for me how I wanted to when I came home. Um, you know what I'm saying? I had no fucking um. Well, it's all about adjusting and adapting. I knew bro. a million people that did this jail shit, but a lot of like the people that I would have got that good wisdom from for that time were I was still locked. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Things like that. And even if they probably gave it to me, I know my homies fucking probably said I've told them a million times. But uh, yeah, like you know, I just came home. I thought I had everything. Like I used, I used to just be like, oh, I'm so, I'm good. Like yeah, you know, which is like you realize things later. And when you come back to this world, this real world in it, over here now, um, you realize things that jail did to you that you just didn't notice then because right. it was normal then. And you come home and you're like, oh, like, you can't go to sleep without the fucking TV off. Right, right, now, right. The little when, things. When, when you grow up fucking smoking weed and just being mm -hmm. able to just pass out at any time. Uh, a million little things like right. that. Um, I, I wake up at 7.30 no matter, unless I'm like fucking passed out. Unless I'm drunk and mm -hmm. I had a crazy night and I have to sleep. But like normally, no matter what, even if I'm not working that day, I'm up. And I'll go back to sleep if I have to. But like, oh, whatever, maybe. But I always, the eyes open at that time. And it's just like, that's just a normal right. thing that you learn from being in that protocol every day you got to stand every fucking day every, every day you day, have to stand there's no way around it unless you you know there's ways around it but it's, regardless that's the, the so rhetoric. talk to me since you're released man what 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 would you say is your proudest moment since you've been released so i've been home now for like three and a half years realistically which is like this may or may not even be something that people want to hear touch, like whatever but like first of all my son is is my soul you know what i'm saying and he's a grown mm -hmm. he's a grown ass man now and he's a mm -hmm. fly young man he's you know what i'm saying he's gonna be with me in videos he's gonna be here he's gonna be on it um but like yeah getting right with him that's the most important thing like that weighed on me more than anything anything in prison you so know what, what are some of the gems you try to drop to your son to kind of so he don't make the same mistakes he's a very you smart make, dude he's a very smart dude he's already took it in so much he got a lot of he does have a lot of guidance from like um my 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 son's mother farrah aesthetics um please please go see her she's got her own business she does um waxing all that she's incredible yeah, but um she 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 you know she she's a great mom she took care of him well taught him a lot of well things and uh he has family members but my family was very involved when i was gone so he already knew what's up like he as much That's as like cool. he loves the style like he love he respects me dog you know what i'm saying he knows what's up he knows i'm a good dude like yeah. he knows i wasn't out here just being some fucking retard trying to show off and nobody like you know what i mean he know i was out there trying to get bread you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i was his baseball coach when i got booked you know what i'm saying i was his yeah. baseball coach for everett high i'm not everett high for 
ever literally. You know, I used to be involved. I used to, you know what I'm saying? It was just, this is how I got the bread. So what's that like when you're in prison, bro, knowing you can't be out there for your son? Is the worst. Are you talking to him on the phone a Every lot, single day. Man? Every, Every single, single day. day. I watched him grow up for those four years through pictures, through visits. He came up to visit. Mm -hmm. All fully active. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just like I always was. You know what I'm saying? I'm sending them home Valentine's Day cards and Christmas cards. And that's the type of pop I was. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of self-reflection in all jail and prison. You ever sit there and feel some sort of guilt or shame about like your position you in your kid's I life? I feel that to this day. And my son's doing good. So there's nothing to feel like that about. It's about anything. Whenever there's anything, you're just like, is that is that happening because this, this, and that? So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, I'm surrounded by so many great, how do I say this all sound crazy? I have a lot of great women in life. My sisters, um, that's first. My cousins, my cousin, my mother, like mm -hmm. things like that. But then even friends, like any women who meet me will tell you like, you know, they are, or every single woman I know tells me stop being so hard on myself and things like that. You yeah. know? But that's just what parents do, you know? But he's good, man. He's good. He's great. He's a great kid. And uh, he has a lot of things going Dope. for him. He's very talented. Um, I tell you, y'all going to see he's the flyest kid on the planet right now. So in the prison, did you learn any skills, traits or anything oh, bro, like that? So Coping many mechanisms, if it's something you want to talk about One, as far as that goes. When it comes to, um, I'm a, I'm a vicious poker player. And I know <laughs> okay. everybody loves talking about being a good poker player. Like I really am a incredible poker player. Um, mm. I still I play to this day from time to time. Um, I did it every single day for three and a half years when I was in there. Um, when you do something every single day for three and a half years, I don't give a fuck who you are. You're going to be good at it, brother. That was That's like me with the working out, pretty much. That, that was no, my me too. Outlet. Oh, that bro. Was my I, thing, I, another thing to keep it, to keep it a buck, people would say, I was 204 in 2019 when I went up to early medium. I'm fucking Working out, it. eating. I was a monster. Mm -hmm. I was a monster. I was an animal. I had people that used to want to work out with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I had yeah. shout out my man Dash. Dash, funny dude, man. He's from um, he's from Washington D.C. This dude was an animal. Shout out my man Reaper too. He was an animal, and these dudes got me right, right. So that when I was going for my so time, you hitting the weights, you doing calisthenics, every, everything. Starting with Cali is always in that's life to I build, do, yeah. build your, build your, build your 90, core. That's, that's funny. Say that I say it's in ninety days at least calisthenics, body weight. You know what I mean? Then I started wanting to get bigger. You start getting more goals as you get somewhere. You're like, oh well, now I want this, and now mm -hmm. I want that. So I ended up getting um, um, bigger. I mean, what does that do for your confidence? Because now you get, you feel yourself. Well, I've getting always stronger. been a confident dude with a small, with a small frame. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So now I literally used to walk around sometimes, which I like. You know, I'm not <laughs> even like this type. That of whole dude. peacock thing. I literally used to be like I wish a motherfucker would you mm. know what I'm saying because I'm ready to fight everybody in here when I was 160 I'm fucking 195 right now jacked out of my gills just to see where you was at okay yeah like if it, I if I practice I could probably do a backflip type shit I was yeah. I was in so such good shape at that time and then um sadly so I wanted to change my weight I was big I was I just wasn't fast anymore like like I, I was working more I was working out when I was playing ball balls was my life so I'm just like I felt I was feeling a little too square yeah. Like, my jumper was just, like, not falling like it used to. You See, I was the opposite. I was playing so much ball towards the end that I lost a lot. Of, I, I was ripped. Weight. I was ripped. But, you, you but were, I was you were incredible like, shape. I thought he was going to be big. I was like, oh, man, you seen me like a year ago. I yeah. was, but I just it's was different just goals. close to the end of my bed, bro. Summertime, springtime, yep. and ball was just such an escape for me. Yeah, you got to be so all dialed. all we did. Because you're so dialed in on defense, dribbling, like you don't have time to be like, I'm in prison, oh, fuck my life, I'm yeah. a shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're just tuned in, you gotta stimulate your brain physically, and, and basketball was that for me, it was like, almost at times I felt free. No, 100%, you know what I mean? 100%, it just, it's one of the greatest things you could do, being able to run, being able to play ball, compete, it was one yeah. of the best things, I did it at every, every single camp I was at, that's how it started for me. Yeah. I'd hit the court. People would be like, get the fuck out of here. I would, I would break someone's ankles. I would hurt somebody. I would, I would, um, that basketball was my life forever, brother. Um, to, all the way down to so many people that could tell you about it. Arguably top five every single camp I was ever in, especially a shooter. Like, I, I do mm, everything, dope. though. I cut ankles. I do everything. But a, sh a shooter, like, I'm just lights the fuck out. It does not matter. Like, that's just what I do. So, but, what about now? You still balling up? Or what are some I, of your I, play, I, I, I have a basketball in my back. I have a hoop in my backyard. I shoot, I shoot, shoot here and there. But yeah, you know, life, life is, uh, yeah, that's life. I be I'm lifing right now, especially yeah. with this music shit on the run I'm going right now. So yeah, let's talk about the um the music. At what point did did you start doing music? Is this something you decided? I've been doing music way for before, so long. And it's just... Um, me I had a group called the Head Spinners from Somerville, Mass. Man, shout out Salam MC, Sir Richter, Sleepy Hollow, so many people. My man Triz, um, so many people. Mm -hmm. Um, the dudes I told you I let go yeah. home that day from that ride. That they that, that these are Head Spinners. Okay, and um. And at this point, you're, you're in the studio, you're recording, you're doing videos and shows and everything, or what's, like, what's the level show, of music? We, our first show, we open up for Cool G Rap. So we go, he loves us, loves us to death. We come, bro, we're, we're 13 dudes on stage, we're nine, nine, to, nine to 13 dudes on stage, artists and other people. Um, 
performance, spitting crazy shit. We, we were like, if you want to say, like, it, just to cut it all up without having to be all, you know, just being careless. But like, yeah, like we were like a sum of a Wu Tang group, you know. I was just thinking that in my head. Hundred percent, hundred percent. That's just what we were. So yeah, we came up with a song. We had a song. We didn't come out with it. We just performed it. We mm -hmm. had it. it was a song called Back Back to the Villa Again. Mm. And um, and basically, uh, it was Nas when he first came out. He did Back to the Grill again um, with um, okay. DJ Search, I think. I think okay. if I'm correct there. And uh, so we was just and Nas is from Queens. G raps younger man's. Yep. So he peeped it, bro. He was like, "What Fire. they did back? They did that." And uh, we ended up doing a song with him. It's uh, it's uh, it's out. Um, been out for years. Um, it's um, Head Spinners featuring Cool G Rap, The Call. And uh, yeah, yep. man. G raps my dog to this day. Um, um, I met mad good people through him. I met Az. I met Foxy Brown. I was at Thirty Eight Special mm. Studio before with him. I was. Uh, I met um, my man cousin Naughty from from North Philly, who literally shut, is part of the reason I got buzz now. Mm. Like he pushing me now. Oh. My man. Um, um, extraordinary Jules. Um, he's a producer. That's my man's one of G Rap's producers. Mm. Um, these are all family to me, good people. I met Domingo through these dudes, things like that. Like, so not so then you get to prison, you you write in and now so your plan I catch, is I the music thing? I catch the case for the first pistol yeah. um coming back and from Sean Price because they put me on with Sean Price. He yeah, put me yeah, on with yeah. Sean Price. So um that puts a hold on everything. I come home and then um, you know, I just like I put music down for a little bit, I was trying to get bread, uh, yep. um you know, I got my son, I got everything going on. So, like, yeah. But I've always been tapped in with these dudes, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Until this day, I'm tapped in with Cousin Naughty. That's my man's. That's G-Rap's, like, road manager, basically. It's his dog that he grew up with, um, you so, know, that he's known for years. I saw, too, you had the um, the feature with my guy, Fast Coop. Ha. Talk about how that um, how that developed. Is that somebody you just So, Fast Coop is a good friend of mine. And shout out to Fast Coop, man. Shout Make out sure to Fast Coop. Into, uh, to the crib, we, we did a crib. crib podcast, yes sir. Mm -hmm. Nah, Coop um, my guy, he was up here, uh, one of the first dudes. So I always, you know, appreciate, especially the first dudes before this even was a platform for making it a platform. So absolutely. salute to guys like that. Fast I'd Coop, say bro. this, man. Um, he is going to be part of the scene forever. Um, he he was one of the first ones to be out there, really doing a lot of things, and uh, he's um he's definitely a part of my story, man. I was down and out for a long time, and this dude used to call call me to come out over and over and over and over i was in a situation in life that wasn't good and i was just like yeah 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 never mm -hmm. came bro and then i finally was loose from that very first night out he got me in like a viral video with him and voss mm -hmm. give me that send the addy give me the addy um fire track yeah got like 250 up there nice. um i'm in that i'm all through that video like but this is again this is just what he does you know he involves people he uh he knows that everybody gonna be doing it. It's not gonna be just one person, right. bro. It's just not. It's just not gonna happen. Right. Like you know, yes, right now one does one person extent exponentially. Every, um, you know, but like this is the this is it. It takes that and the doors open. Um, this thing's going on, dog. You know, so he's like he knows what time was yeah. and he knows that I stand on business. You know, it's more than the music thing. It's not like he's like oh he's such a, it's more than it's eighty percent. It's, it's not even yeah. that. He's it's, good people. I actually met him at the uh, train station. I recognized him and I went up to him. It's fine. And, and then we connected. And now since look then. where we're at. Yeah. And then and we now yeah, look absolutely. Where, <laughs> you know, Salute now look at that. That's my guy for sure. So um so yeah, he's a big part of it. Um that's my guy. And uh So what do you what are you pushing now? Do you have a project out now that you are promoting? Do you, right I now, know you man, got a couple videos and some shows coming up. You could talk about that too, or what's the plan? Are you so working right on now, the project? I've been I've been performing a lot. Um shout out Talk of the Town, shout out I'm Voss, Salute. shout out my man Voss, who put me onto a lot of ill shows. Um I fuck with Voss the long way too, man. He's an ill dude. Um, long story short, man, I just I want to be active in all levels. Um, I wish if it was, you know, if um, money grew on trees, um, I'd be there'd be so much more going on. It's just you know the balance of life is, yeah. is the balance of life. Um, I need to make sure I'm good in in very all levels. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so so basically, um, there are there has been like less than I wanted to be happening, but I have so much going on. I literally put it like this. I have like, I'm going track for track. But even though you don't have that crazy quantity, you got some quality. Your Absolutely. videos are doing, Absolutely. doing well on YouTube. Yes. You know, um, it's, it's good music for yes. sure, bro. Um, shout out Local Vision, shout out um, for shooting the video, shout out Undeniable Sound and Fly High Uzi for, um, engineering it producing it and shout out av spazin who um av spazin is my dog someone i've known for a thousand years he's the reason i linked back up with my studio with with fly high uzi he's my man every beat you hear from me is av spazin um this dude is so talented right. that's just what that is um so yeah so um that's how all that happened and um but the uh yeah the fast coop thing had had created because we had just known each other and um i was like listen i need a track with you we did it um now i feel like at that point too that 
kind of some things going on in, this, in the street, Cambridge, Somerville. Bro. We're all doing the same thing. And um, I say in a couple of songs, like, um, you know, I say, uh, I say, uh, I say in the Demons, shout out the Red Mike series, shout out Undeniable Sound. Like I said, uh, you know, you see me with blood, you see me with lokes, respectful gangster, no matter the coats, because losing a brother, the anger, it soaks. And mm. like, and then I even say over the, uh, right after that, I say over the heads of them ghosts with it, because a lot of people ain't hearing what I'm saying. But um, it's like, listen, man, I don't give a fuck where you from. I don't. I don't ride, this is my saying, I don't ride for like concrete curbs. Um, mm -hmm. I ride for people with beating hearts. I don't give a fuck where you're from. And I don't, you know what I'm saying? As long as you're a solid person, I'll fuck with you. And especially if you fuck with me. So like this whole thing, like I am from Somerville, Mass. Let's get that very clear. Um, It's tatted on my neck. It's part of who made oh, me. Shout out to um, the Ville. Yeah, shout <laughs> out to the Ville. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, But I love Cambridge. Cambridge is part of who I am, dog. My mother's from Cambridge. I'm Cambridge is part of me. Like the world is bigger than this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wouldn't like any of these places if it, they didn't have the other places right surrounding them. Yeah, but nah, Somerville and all these places are dope because these other places are next to it. You know what I'm saying? It's just what it is. It's just part of a bigger thing to see. And um, you like know, you said, it's more about the people than the places. 100%, bro. And sure. um, listen, I got people from, I have people from everywhere around here, bro. Out here, bro. Yeah. They're not just the greater Boston. I'm talking about the state. I got people, you know, I know I'm up again, I'm a people's person. And um, there's real ones and fake ones from every single part of mm -hmm. them. Every single part of them. So I don't give a fuck about. Um, those beefs. Whatever people That's got it. going on is what people got going on. You know That's what I'm saying? It. But um, and, and and hopefully they can get it together and realize that there's money to make out here and there's uh and there's doors to open and we got a lot of talent out yeah. here. I'm hoping they realize that first. And there's a lot of life to live out here, man. A lot of life to live, you know. You know? And with all, I've lost homies. I've lost. You know what I'm saying? I got tattoos down all down my arm for, but you know, I still got people I got to put. Sad to say, and yep. um, yeah. Long story short, I'm not letting um all their pain and and all the shit that they went through and then all the pain of after losing these people. Mm. Um, um, go to what me wiping it away because I want to prove yeah. something to somebody. It's very uh, a self-destructive. A man with something to prove ain't yeah. a man at all. They, that's not always the situation, but like you know what I'm saying. That's something to look on, you know. Yeah, no doubt. Blind so you've been out nobody. for a little bit of time, man. Yep. Um, you know how it is, man. Recidivism. A lot of people don't. They can't make the adjustment, man. So say you had a homeboy, bro, coming home, just came home today. Yep. What kind of advice would you give him, or knowledge, or, or tips to help him stay out? And do what he got to do. Keep it slow. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple, please. Because what I did is I tripped over my front feet all the first year, first year and a half. Because I said, oh, no, but I got to have this, I got to have this. Because you plan on it for so long. You got, mm -hmm. However long you're in. I only did three and a half years, bro. You know, for someone that's even um, as much time as I was away or as long as, um, you know, as, as some people, 10 years, 15 years, bro. Just remember, it's a different world. Mm -hmm. um, pay, uh, the pace of money is different. The pace of energy is different. The pace of personality is different. Everything's different. Um, you're going to be shocked a lot. Mm. You're going to be held on. And just always remember, don't let that shock turn into reaction, like, you know, right. before you end up back in, you know. Yep. Just, just, you know, find your lane. And try to, I, I'd say, you know, if you're not, if you're not, uh, if your goal isn't out to make like a big stand on something, if your goal is to just get through and really live, um, you know, comfortably and things like that, man, just get out the way, find your lane, find mm. your lane and, and, and stick with it, man. And find something that you love that, that, you, that you, that's going to keep you away from wanting to do other things. Right. You know what I'm saying? You find something you love. I love this music shit. Um, I love um, people and things like that. It's so, it's, it dances on the line of all the bad shit. Right, that's what right, sucks right. about it. But, uh, but I love this shit enough that I know I'm going to be able to use it one day to, mm. um, to take care of my people's open doors, you know? So, so. what area of um, like personal development have you feel like that you grew the most? Mm. My decision making on how to handle situations that, is probably my biggest growth. I like that. Yeah, I um, like that. Which I always had. Some people would be like, "What do you mean?" I knew many years ago, and he made great decisions, like in right. situations. But it's just like I think I just think I have a better understanding on it, and um, it makes me feel more comfortable because I feel like I'm not going nowhere, man. Got I'm you. not going nowhere the so, way I move. You're hell of a people person. That's your strength, and I think it's important for us as people to notice what your strength is, and then you can kind of use that in whatever way, like you're doing the music. So you yep. use your people skills, you know, you make connections and all of that, right? And that's great to, to, to refine the strengths. Talk about an area in, of improvement that you think you could work on moving forward. I know it's tough to look at the weaknesses. We all no, want to, no, no, no. you know, flex our strengths it's and part stuff, of being but a it's man. all right be, it's part to of being be vulnerable, a man for bro. Sure. Like, no, it's part of being a man. Um, I'm just trying to pick the right one. 
my discipline. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put it like that. Um, it's tough. Which it's people tough. love just saying it that simply because if everybody was disciplined, the whole world would just be, um, a, a, you know, oh, be like apples, an and, apples yeah. and oranges. We'd be all great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not the world. Nobody. We'd know, be living in Eden. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, yeah, exactly. Everybody would be in line fucking living in peace and harmony. So it's just like, yeah, um, I, I just think my discipline, man, um, I've, I've had strong, strong times in my life of discipline mm -hmm. and it showed great things. And then I fell short from that at discipline. times. Finding out, finding out my goal, finding out everything I want and being strict on that and not worrying about other things that I mm. might want, but don't need. Got you. Um, and that's where I need to tighten up. But uh, I'm on that goal. I'm on that journey right now. I, I, you know, I stay, I stay as focused as I can on this music, trying to work, trying to do everything I can, man. So Just, let's get a little bit into that too, the music. How important is music to you? Uh, it's part, part of everything of your I life, am, man. brother. Uh, my mother, I, I mean, I listen to my mother listen to, you know, things like, you know, Aerosmith and like, and like Iris uh, from the Goo Goo Dolls and then like reggae. Like I, mm. I literally grew up on like Jock Cure and like my mom listened to like everything that had to do with love and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and vibe, you know, my mother's a vibe. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, before rap, before anything, these are things that I loved. Um, I lo I, to this day, yeah. I, my, my tablet up the way, t dudes will tell you up <laughs> the way, my tablet was always top three on the camp and it, half of it was reggae and reggaeton and, and shit like that. Um, um, so nope. that's music has just always been part of me no matter what mm -hmm. um, the music for me now is so important because it literally to me is just like it's just you know like whatever I'm gonna be I'm gonna be an important person in life to, to everybody is an important person to somebody in life and right. like I think I've already touched that many people that if I was gone today it's like this, mm -hmm. it's it's I've already touched so many people yeah. brother I promise that so like for me it, that's just the goal to continue you know to just mm -hmm. try to keep you know, using the music to touch people, but that's why the music's so important because I think it's the easiest way for me. People, gotcha. it's the easiest way people look at me um, uh, or will look. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I think understand. you know, you standing outside on a podium, it's hard to get people to stand there for more than ten minutes. Um, mm -hmm. you know, teaching them things through art, it's no way. It's amazing. Way, I love you know? music, art, anything, any way that someone can express themselves. Expression. Artistic, artistically, um, even this, this is kind of an art in a way. This too. is Sitting incredible. Doing a podcast, conversation I appreciate is that. an art. Right. I am a conversation. Stories have value. All of that, man. Yeah. I'm a conversationalist, bro. So this life, is how I have but what like, I yeah, it's all good to say everything. You know, we, we striving to be the best men that we can be and better right. ourselves, be a little bit better every day. But life is stressful. Yeah. So talk to me about some of your ways to de-stress. Yeah. So these ways to de-stress, getting back to being real and vulnerable about it, these are the things that are the problem for me mm -hmm. in some ways. You know, I fucking I go out, I drink, things mm -hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? Like things like that. These are which is everybody be like, oh well, you know, you're grown. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we all know, we all know what's what we we, we all know within ourselves. Um, What's pulling us back and what's not? Right. Um, especially the things we like. It's that voice. In your especially the things we like. Yep. When we like it, we're gonna give every reason about why it's not pulling us back. Okay. So I don't have time for shit. People will tell you in my life, like I literally will, like I'm the type to work my job to a mm -hmm. certain time, get out of my job with my whole entire fit for the night, go mm -hmm. do a show in two hours after mm -hmm. that, and then have to be back and work that morning. But then when I get out of work that next morning, I still have another podcast to go to at that time. Right. Like, I just don't leave myself. So I time. say staying busy then, I would say. It's a very great thing. It's yeah. a very great thing. Because then you, you don't have time to stress. But you, it's a mental, but, but that, you have to be mentally strong for it because what all humans need is time to breathe. Mm -hmm. And there's times where I literally feel like I haven't took a breath in three weeks. Right. Um, you get me? Like, I need Facts. to breathe. I, I need bet. to fucking relax. And it's hard to find that when your goals are fucking, mm -hmm. when you're standing on business all the right. time. You know what I'm saying? So try to find the balance. Um, yep. That's one of the things I want to, you know, another thing I want to, as part of working on. Um, but those are, but, but coping with all the stresses, man, I think um, the music is a huge one for me. I was writing, I'm literally, I was outside the studio today, bro. I was a half an hour early. Mm -hmm. um, again, I know. Yeah, I appreciate it. In this. a great mood today. I'm here to come I, see yeah, you I finally. Yeah, I appreciate you coming through, come man. Through. And it's like I try to tell people when they come on here, this is your platform too. Absolutely. So, my guy, anything that you want to talk about or touch on or Absolutely. something that you wanted to get to that maybe we might have missed or even any point or, or your story or anything that you want to put out there. His chance to do that, man. I sometimes when when I'm given a chance to speak, sometimes people will say to me like, I've I've, I've literally had women tell me like, you love talking about yourself, and uh, it's <laughs> true, it's true, it's true. I can't even deny it. And um, I sometimes will even start talking fucking biblical ways and shit just through just through, you know, I'll put it like this. Um, I'm here to just sh to show people that like all those things that like we second guess, just like they're just made up. 
mm -hmm. know. Um, you know, there's every reason in the world people might have thought from beginning times why I shouldn't be in the world that I'm in or in the lane I'm in. Or, and, you know, I'm just here to show that, like, uh, it, it's comfortable to be yourself. Mm -hmm. It's comfortable to be yourself. Yeah. No matter who you are, I don't give a fuck who you are. I got, I got friends, I got, you know, I know kids that are whatever. I know uh, all lanes, you know, like, I, I, and, uh, you know, it's just comfortable to be yourself. And um, when it comes to me, this music shit is, uh, it could be it could be brought very far. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For us in this place, we all know how far the music could be brought. Right. Um, and, and, and not just music, media. We're talking mm -hmm. about podcasts, we're talking about conversation, we're talking about everything. I just want people to know that that's what I'm focused on. I'm, so, that's what I'm focused on. You might, you're gonna see me, people see me, you go down my grand, people, I know people look and they go, I can't believe half of the shit I see this dude doing um, mm -hmm. and who he's with. You know, shout out to so many, everybody I fuck with. Yep. Everybody some I people will be haters about it, but uh, Real One's going to be inspired by it. Yeah, that, you know man. what's and so crazy? You, even something that, if I could do something, if you could do something that just sparks someone else to do to something do even greater, and that's, that's just amazing what it because it's all part of the story. 100%. It all plays a part. It does. And uh, no bullshit, I'm not going to lie, man. I haven't forgotten any hate yet. Being who you are defeats all these energies in the world, brother. Um, like, you know, I want to touch on that, too. I just think it is super important to be yourself because you know why? If you're trying to be like, you can smell. If, if I'm that. trying to be like you, I can never be as good and at being you that. as you. But can't nobody be a better me than me? I can't me. be. Can't nobody be mm -hmm. a better you than you? So mm -hmm. be you. Own it. All the eccentricities or mm -hmm. whatever, man. All your little quirks or something. Like, own that. Yep. And give that to the world, cause can't nobody be a better you than That's you it, for bro. sure. But if you keep that genuineness down to the core man um it shines all that trying to copy somebody's shit it's we see it mm -hmm. we see it stop doing it we see it right it comes out cringe. we see it i can awkward. see right through it. it yeah for sure <laughs> this is why every one of my songs which again i don't have much out i got four tracks out um my last music video is magnum opus it's at like 32k again yeah um, and i'm gonna um, drop the uh, links for for those videos in the description too and yeah if you wanted to let them know how they can find you on all the platforms, bro. I know you already went through it in the beginning, but no, let's absolutely, run it back. absolutely. Um, author Supreme, man. So I made it tricky when I was younger, thinking it was cool, but it's all good. It's part of who <laughs> I am. But um, author Supreme as a book author, right? So A U T H O R space S U P R E E M, not the correct way you spell okay. Supreme, um, but that's just what it is. Um, and that so Instagram author Supreme six one seven, um, Facebook author Supreme, um, Linktree author Supreme, um, gotcha. that has everything. Um, my um, my YouTube page author Supreme. Um, again, I I have merch. This is my merch. This is my logo. I got it on the chain and I got it on the you know on the clothing. Oh, I got I got a bunch of merch coming. Um, Talk about it, man. What's the what's the brand, so, man? So where can they get it? It's ASP short for author Supreme, man. That's all. Uh, that's gotcha. why you know sooner or later once things get to where they gotta be, Salute. ASP will be part of it. But um, yeah, man. Um, I put a lot of time into it. Shout out Frankie 5.0 who designed this logo. Um, that's my man's. Um, he he does all types of art. Um, he's the man. Go holla at him. Um, uh, but he designed this logo for me. I went and paid and got it done as a pendant. Fire. Now it is my logo. It is my logo for many things. Um, the merch. Um, I have shirts. I got t-shirts. I got women's clothes being made right now. Women booty shorts. I got all types of things happening. Um, so that's all in the making. Um, right. you know. Um, but yeah. Um, basically. You know, oh, again, shout out to um, Two Sons Customs for, for those customs. Um, that's my man's go holler at him. And my man, um, G4B, um, my man, Fully Grown Nasus, he does a million things too. Mm -hmm. He prints, he does a, a bunch. I'm active and we're out here, man. I'm doing a lot of things. I got a lot of shows coming up. Uh, I'm performing February 23rd in Fall River with Dougie TV Official. These dudes are throwing an event. Um, I'm going to be going to VA with Talk of the Town um, on the 30th. Shout out Talk of the Town for involving me in all these great things. Um, I just hope we just had a little event with Lord Jew. Nice. Uh, Lord Jew's popping out here. Shout out to Lord Jew. And, uh, sh you know, shout out um, Official King Ace who was there, who's another official dude really doing his thing out here. Yep, cool. um, Fly High Ozzy, that he's an artist. He's my, he's everything, bro. He's my bro. producer. He's my cameraman. He's everybody. <laughs> he does everything. Right, the yep. dude is the, the listen, man. Sh shout out. Fly High Uzi, undeniable sound, man. These awards that have been going on, you know, I love how they're doing them. Mm -hmm. so these people get a, better put my mans in there as hardest working producer out here, brother. Like, this is what he's doing everything, brother. He literally has a, a promotional video on his page of him. He cut the video where it's him recording in the studio, mm -hmm. engineering the song, shooting the video. He does it all. That's, That's what he up. does. So, shout out to him. That's my guy. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you pulling through your story. You got a great story. I, I feel like. People could definitely get something for it. Absolutely. They all have value. Um, anybody on the inside right now that you could that you want to shout out or anything like that, man? 
They, yeah, you know, I know we leave a lot of people behind in it's there. It's tough. Man. It's tough. It's hard to get everybody. Yeah, there. I know. So, I know. Listen, um, from the beginning to uh, from the beginning of everything, I will start with shout out Av Spazin again. This is my beat producer, one of the most talented out there. He slept on viciously. Um, shout out Undeniable Sound. That's where my where my studio is. Shout out Fly Hot Uzi. Shout out Jizzy Hendrix. Shout out um, Talk of the Town. These are a big coalition there. Um, Again, shout out Fast Coop for introducing me. He's part of the reason I'm here. Um, shout out my man Doobie Loke, who is doing mad work out here right now. Um, he's a, he just he I mean he was just with Dave V's doing a lot of stuff. He's he's doing a lot of things. Um, man, shout out I got so many people. Right. Shout out Ricky Racks, my man um, Ken Rock SD. I I got I mean I'm involved with so many people. Um, shout out shout out my man Curve. Shout out Shy Godly. Shy Godly's a big artist out here doing mm -hmm. his thing. Um, yeah, man. Um, just shout out all the people, man, that's um, involved and sees me working and respects how I'm moving, man. And um, and I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's right. a lot of artists out here. There's so many artists. It's so funny. Yeah, like you said, mm -hmm. there's so many artists. I want to shout out so many more. Um, but we, we, there's gonna be many more. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna make sure I get to them too. But uh, but yeah, man. Um, shout out, shout out, Bobby Luke, man. And the, you know, I mean, the bounce back. So you know what I'm saying? This that. is this is this conversation's hard to get. Yeah. Right? This conversation's <laughs> hard to get. You I don't get this conversation everywhere, man. Right. Tap into my man's, please. He. He knows what he's doing here. He's bringing in interesting people that really been through things that are able to talk about these things. So please, even if you have to go back on the episodes, go peep what this man's doing. He's really doing things over here, man. And I appreciate him for bringing me through and having me here. Word. One saying? more time. Thank you for coming through, Absolute. man. Absolutely. Hey, this is The Bounce Back. I'm your boy, B. Luke. One uh -huh. more time. <laughs> Author Supreme in the building, man. You know no. what it is. It is what it is. What's next is what you make it. On that note, we out of here. Peace. <laughs> Got a moment when they see you down, there's no way.